Hello, precious ones. Welcome to today's program, Kiss Down with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nina AJ. Hi, hi, children. Hi, 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 hi children, children of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, friend Amen. of all little children. children. We want to welcome all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Precious ones, we are in the month of February, and we have this month, the whole of this month, we've been talking about love. Love, 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 love. And um, 14th of February, we all know that it's Valentine's Day. People celebrated it. You don't have to only celebrate it with your loved one. You have to celebrate it with your enemies too. The Bible says that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. We should love people that do not want to be loved. We should love them and pray for them, hoping that one day God will touch them and then God will be able to also offer love. And today we are here again. We are here again to continue with our lesson. We want you to find a place to sit. We want you to invite a friend, call mom and dad to sit in the couch with you, get um, an apple, glass of water, and let's just um, um, go through the Bible, journey through the Bible, and learn something and have some fun. But before we do that, well, we have precious ones, beautiful girls, princesses, and prince that are here, princes that are here, and um, they are going to introduce themselves. So we'll start with the first person. Hello, I am Darren Afuri from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Declan Afuri from Cleveland District. If what we are waiting for you, honey. Uh, my name is Afia from Charlotte District. Hi, my name is Joel from Norcross District. Hi, my name is Kayla from Norcross District. Hi, my name is Anika from Norcross District. Hi, my name is Jamie Neboa from the Cincinnati District. Hello, my name is Benedict Neboa from the Cincinnati District. We want to welcome all of you precious ones to today's program, Kids Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. You are all welcome. And you precious ones at home, we welcome all of you. Mommies, daddies, grandpa, grandma, aunties, uncles, nephew, nieces. You are all welcome to today's program. We love you all so much. We love you all so much. Um, we are going to learn our memory verse for today. We are going to learn our memory verse for today. And our memory verse for today will be taken from... Um, First Corinthians, our memory verse for today will be taken from First Corinthians chapter, let me go back. First Corinthians chapter, First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 6. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 6. So we are going to read it. I'm going to read it first. And then when I'm done, I will let all of you try as well, okay? So I read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 6. And I read from the NIV version. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Amen. 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 So precious Amen. ones, I want you to say it together. Take your time, wait for one another, and let us all say it together. One, go. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not not It is not It is It is not 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 
Our memory verse for this week is First Corinthians. Now you can mute yourself. First Corinthians. Okay. Amen. God bless all of you. Our memory verse for this week is First Corinthians 13, 4 to 6. And we just read from the NIV version. God richly, richly bless all of you. Precious one, we want you to practice your memory verse at home. Practice your memory verse at home. Um, we are still in the topic of what? Uh, in the month of February, talking about true love, true love. And today, our emphasis will be the love that is what? Forgiven. The love that is forgiven. Our topic for today, our topic for today is true love. Love is forgiven. Love is forgiven. And our scripture reading will be taken from Genesis 37, 12 to 28. Genesis chapter 37, verse 12 to 28. And we will let um, Benedict read for us. Genesis chapter 37, verse 12 to 28. And I read from the NIV Bible. Now his brothers has gone to graze their father's flock near Shechem. And the Israelites, Israel, said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, and I'm going to send, them, send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring them back to me. Then he sent them off to the Valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the field and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dotham. 18, but when they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. Say that ferocious animal de devour him. Then we will see what comes out of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let us not take his life, he said. Do not shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take them him back to his father. 23. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe the ornament robe he was wearing, and took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a carpet of Ishmaelites coming for good leave. Their, their candles were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judas Judah said to, said to his brother, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. The brothers agreed. 28, so when the midnight merchant came to buy his brother, pulled Joseph out of the cistern, sold him from 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. Amen. 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 God Amen. richly bless you. God richly bless all of you. So today our story is about a large family. In fact, there were 12 brothers. Their father's name was Jacob. With that many brothers, surely there was a lot of arguing, fighting, competition going on among them, right? There was no doubt that, uh, uh, doubt, doubt that, I mean, plenty of these opportunities of opportunity for someone to become angry with the other one, it, it, it's, it's, it's something that was common to happen, right? But Jacob loved one son, Joseph. 
more than all the other sons or other children he had. The Bible says that Jacob made a very special color for what? Robe for what? For Joseph. Joseph even told his brothers about dreams he had he had where they were all bowing down to him. Hmm. Remember, Joseph was was one is was 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 a young person, right? If you look at all the brothers, he was he was the youngest, right? But guess what? Just imagine you, the youngest, going to is going to stand in front of your older people, brother brothers, and bragging in their faces that oh, I I got this dream and in these dreams that I had, all of you were bowing down to me. Huh? You're gonna be in trouble. I'm sure they're gonna beat you up, right? And 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 not only that, the boys also knew that their dad's favorite was him, right? But as a result of Jacob's favoritism and Joseph's dreams, his brothers became extremely jealous and angry with J Joseph. As we have read, precious ones, I want us to start thinking, how did the brothers show their jealousy and anger towards their brother? I want us to start thinking about what our Benedict read, and I want us to kind of go in and talk about that. Yeah, yes, Benedict. They showed extreme jealousy and sold him to unknown. I can see why they didn't kill him because like that would just be pretty much cruel. But still, you should love your brother as yourself. Anybody, the Bible even says, anybody who says they love God, but hates their brother or sister is a liar. And also, I want to add that in Matthew Matthew 6, verse 14, it says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive their sins, your Father will not forgive you. And most people ask, how many times are you supposed to forgive? I know you can't keep forgiving people forever and ever. But you should. Because this ties in with Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 22. When Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times, Jesus answered. But I told them, not seven times, but 77 times. And this basically means that you should keep forgiving. As long as you live your life, you forgive everyone and anyone who does wrong to you. God bless you. Fantastic contribution, um, Benedict. So far as we people wrong us, we should learn to forgive one another. If somebody comes to you, as Benedict quoted in Matthew, and, and, and Peter was asking Jesus, how many times do we have to forgive, right? And the answer that Jesus gave shows that what? We have to forgive. Anytime somebody wrongs you, forgive. Whether they come to apologize or they don't come, up, uh, they don't come back to apologize, you need to forgive them. Because when we forgive, that is when our Heavenly Father will also forgive us. So remember, when you wrong Jesus, or when you wrong a friend, right? When you, when you sin against God, you go to God, oh God, please forgive me. Mommy told me not to go to the fridge for that candy or not to touch that juice, and I did. Oh, God, I can't tell mommy and daddy when they asked me a lie. Please, God, forgive me, right? You want God to forgive you, right? But when your brother or your sister took that juice and drank some, you weren't telling on him or her. Why? Because what? As for you, know, you can forgive, but God should forgive you of what you did that nobody saw you. No way. Forgiveness goes both ways. Forgive. The Bible is telling us, let us forgive. It doesn't have to be only your friends that you have to forgive them. We have to forgive everyone. Anybody that wrongs you, let us try and forgive them. Yes, Darren. I just wanted to add that Jesus did not only for Jesus does not need to only forgive us in heaven, but he can also forgive us on earth. Just like he did to the woman who poured the alabaster jar of oil on his 
also forgive the person and people started asking themselves like so who is this person who even forgives the sins of people good if you look at the woman i love that that story about the the parable about the woman with the um alabaster oil the alabaster oil was an expensive oil right then you cannot use to clean somebody's feet right but this woman saw himself uh, herself as unclean right but she still went to god and used this expensive oil to wash the feet of what of jesus and the disciples were asking why what a waste why are you wasting this precious oil right but jesus told them that what they should leave the woman alone beloved forgiveness has no what when somebody would uh, for um, when you sin against somebody, you don't have to say, that, "Oh, this person, the way he hurt me, because of the way this person hurt me, oh, that was so deep, so I will not forgive." And that one, oh, it's okay, it didn't really hurt me that much, so I will forgive. No, you don't put price on forgiveness. You forgive. God said we should freely forgive. We should forgive and let it go. Let God be the judge of it. You forgive. Fulfill scripture and forgive. And then God will do what? Uh, God will what? Will also forgive you of your sin. Amen. Now, um, I'll go to Anika and then we go to Ephia and then we go to Benedict and we come to Joel. So um, in this story, like it's telling us that we should always like love our brothers and sisters no matter when they do sin. Because because I learned this before that whatever you do comes back to you. Not because you're doing it just because you want credit for it, but you don't have to do it always for the credit because you are doing the right thing even, even if it was someone did something bad. So whenever someone does something wrong to you, you should always forgive them, even no matter how much it hurts, because one day they will even start saying that they were sorry and then you, for, you forgive them already. So by the time you realize you already done the good thing. Awesome, awesome. Great contribution, Anika. God bless you, yes and for. Okay, if I is not ready, let's go to Jaden. And, and, and Jonah, God forgave Jonah because he went the wrong way because God didn't tell him to go that way, but he still did. But God still forgave him. Awesome, Jaden. Jaden is saying that what? John, God forgave what Jonah when he said against God. When God told him to go to uh, Nineveh, he decided to go to somewhere where else. God sent him go and do something here. And he decided to go to the opposite side and do something else, right? But even after he was swollen, well, the, the world swallowed him. What happened? God still forgave him. He was forgiven. God forgave Jonah, okay? So sometimes it doesn't, we don't have to put price on forgiveness. We have to forgive freely. God bless you. Yes, Benedict. And then we come to Joel. I also want to add to Anika. Well, even if nobody sees you, somebody is always seeing you. It's the eye in the sky. Also, also even when you do something wrong and repent, like Jesus said, and Jonah, God still forgives you. Because even remember what I said, even God, block, even I, who blocks out the um, wrong things, I forget. Jesus forgets about what you did when you confess your sins to God. God bless you, Benedict. God bless you. Sometimes we precious ones, we do certain things and we think that, oh, mommy is not here. Oh, daddy is not here. So I, I can do whatever I want. I love when we see kids say that a lot. Oh, mommy is not here, daddy's not here. I can do whatever I want. No, you can do whatever you want. But remember what Bennett is. There is a big two eyes watching you from the sky. Is watching you. 
right? The omnipresent God. God is present everywhere, even in your own quiet places, in your secret places that you think nobody is watching. God is watching you from there. That makes him supreme. He's the supreme God. So remember, precious ones, whatever we do, don't think that you are hiding from, from God. If mommy and daddy don't see you, there's one person, one only person that sees all we do, and that is God. Therefore, we should learn to stay clean with God. We need to learn to forgive. Let us love. Let us love. You see, beloved, when you have a big heart, when you, you, are, you are a precious child that forgives, when somebody wrongs you, even though it may hurt, but love, love will quench all the anger. Love will quench all the all the, all the, all the sadness from you and take away all the sorrows and you will be able to forgive, okay? God bless you. That was a great contribution. We'll come to Joel. Joel Hans has been up for a while. Well, if you read later in Genesis to like the, like, it's still like the Joseph, later he forgives his brothers, like, even, even though they are um, like, they plan to kill him and sell him to like merchants. He still forgave them. And it reminds me of a Bible verse. It's Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offense. But love covers it all. Love covers it all. God richly bless you, Joel. That was a great contribution. God bless you. Yes, we go to um, Darren Declan and then Anaika. Okay, I wanted to say that when you read First Thessalonians five fifteen, it says that do do make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. So when you read the first part of the verse, Paul is a, Paul is encouraging us so that we will not try to get even with everyone else, whoever offends us. Awesome, awesome. God richly bless you. Awesome. Yes. Um, if one, oh no, uh, that that claim. Sorry, and so, um, it says in the first John 1 9 that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness. So then, so, um, as um, I think it's been as Benedict said in this time last and uh, um, last time. He he said that um, this has, this um, no, it was Jaden actually. Jaden said that you should forgive people seven times, seventy-seven times. So then, as so my, also my dad also said that don't you count how many times you're forgiven. Just forgive because he said an example that if you are a man and yet someone every day sins against you. And every day you count number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, to four, all the way to about 400. You are continuing to count. You are just basically also sending. No, you're actually not forgiving the person. Yes, that is right. Because you're still holding the grudge against the person. <laughs> yes, great contribution, Declan. You are still well, holding a grudge against somebody. Why? Because well, you are not being able to, and remember, I just want all of you to think about your heart, right? Look at how small your heart is. Our heart is right here, right? It's on your left hand side, up on your upper chest right here, right? That is where your heart is. And I pray that everybody will get the opportunity to do science, anatomy, and physiology so that you learn about your heart. And I tell you, it's an amazing organ to learn about. When I was doing this and I have to learn it, I was like, wow, God is so good. Beloved, the heart is so small for us to power people. Just imagine how big human beings are. And look at how small your heart is. And you keep counting the people's wrong, right? You keep putting them here. Keep keeping them in their heart. Just imagine. You become a bitter person, right? You'll be so bitter about life. You're so bitter about everything. You're always angry for no reason. You're always whining. Why? Because you keep harboring bitterness, people's wrongs in your heart. The Bible is telling us that let's forgive. Let's forgive. Forgive, right? Hand them over to God. Just say, you know what? I forgive you. 
I'm done. It's not my place, right? To hold grudge against you. I forgive you. Lead it to God, right? As precious ones, let us love to forgive one another. When we forgive one another, we'll be able to live at peace with people and our friends. Remember, if your friend does something and you don't like it, right? Instead of you, of, uh, instead of you to judge them, pretty much precious ones, all you can do for them is to what? When you go on your knees to pray, ask God to forgive them. Whatever they are doing that you don't like, ask God to forgive or they are doing to you don't like, ask God to forgive them so that they don't keep hurting your feelings, right? You can do that. You can do that instead of passing judgment at them, okay? God bless you. Yes, and I can. So um, I remember this time when um, I wouldn't stop doing the thing, the thing I've been doing wrong all this time. I like, I never stopped and repented. But one day I realized that it was too much. So I asked God to help me and he did more for me. So, so then I thought I shouldn't think about it because then the more I think about it, the more it will actually happen. And I was right because I didn't, when I didn't think about it, I just, I just felt better and I did it and I didn't sin anymore. And God helped me, helped me to stop my sin. Great contribution. And I can say is that she used to struggle with something. She used to struggle with something that anytime she does it, she feels like she's sinning to God. But she got to a point that she has always wanted to stop, but she couldn't. So she prayed to God and asked God to help her. And God helped her. And she realized that when she doesn't think about it, she doesn't have to do it. And by so pra by she practicing that act, now she doesn't even have to do it anymore. And she's so grateful to God. God bless you for sharing, Anika. Remember, now let's go back to the story we're talking about, about Joseph and the brothers. Yes, um, whose hand was up? Yes, Akela. It's Joel. It's Joel, Joel. Okay, all I just want to say is in Luke 6.35, it says that, but love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward would be great and and you will be son of the most high for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil so basically what this means is that when you love you shouldn't only love the people who love you you should love the people who aren't nice to you that's the whole point of loving and also you shouldn't think of anything you shouldn't think about having nothing in return think about what you'll be having in heaven which is like sitting by uh jesus christ and listening to him and everything so that's all i want to say great contribution joel god bless you when we what when we somebody sin against us we shouldn't always think about what what the person has only done we should just forgive right and when we forgive them we shouldn't expect anything in return our reward is in heaven so we should love you that we shouldn't only love our friends we should love our enemies and forgive our enemies just as we forgive our friends when they wrong us god bless you god bless you joel god richly bless you yes um um benedict and then we go to oh Okay, since uh, Caleb's son is up there, let's just talk. Caleb, you can go and then we'll go to um, Benedict. This kind of reminds me when, uh, like, you know, like me and Joel, most of the time when we do stuff, we both want like something in return. For example, like, um, like one time um, I helped Bishop, um, like, and Joel, you know, like, clean his room. I was like, well, what are you going to give me? And then he said nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. And Joel said nothing? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you wanted Joel. When you help Joel clean his room, you were expecting that Joel will help you clean your room or help you do something in return, right? But he said nothing. Oh, Joel, you shouldn't have said nothing. Well, I'm sure Caleb didn't want anything. From the question that J uh, Caleb asked you, I know that he wanted something in return right? 
But the Bible is telling us that when we do good, we shouldn't expect anything in return. When it happens naturally, thanks be to God, we will take it, right? But we shouldn't expect anything in return. But guess what the answer Caleb gave, uh, Joel gave? Nothing. And I'm sure you were disappointed, right? For him saying that, right? Like, what? I did all this and you telling me that? No, next time I'm not going to help you. No, the Bible is telling us that when we do good, when we show love, we shouldn't expect anything in return, okay? God bless you, Caleb. That was a great uh, uh, um, um, example that you just gave. God richly bless you. Perfect one. Um, we'll go to um, Benedict. So I just wanted to add on to what um, Caleb said, uh, jo Joel, yeah, about storing tre treasures. The Bible says that you shouldn't store your treasures on earth where it can get lost, stolen, or destroyed. You can store your treasures in heaven where nothing bad will happen to them because your treasures will God. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, Jaden. God forgave us by dying on the cross for you. God forgave, he forgave us by dying on the cross. You see, that's what um, uh, Jaden is saying. Uh, to put it right, Jesus, God sent his only son to come to this world to die for us, right? Why did he come to this world to die for us? Be, first of all, because of the love he has for us, right? He loved us so much that he sent his only son only one, the only one cookie that I got, I have to share it with everybody, right? That is a perfect example. That favorite candy of yours, mommy and daddy says you need to share it among all of you. But you see, you could have enjoyed it alone. Here, Bible says that what? Jesus, God sent his only son to come die for us, for our sins, for you and I, our sins. What a love, what a big love that God loves us. Beloved, we need to exhibit that love, right? Sometimes it's hard to love. I know some of you may be saying, Auntie Nice just saying as if it's so easy to love. Honey, I've been in those situations before where sometimes it's hard to forgive. Sometimes it's very, very, very hard to forgive. You know, this person has wronged you. It hurts. It's so painful. And it's not only one time. It is over and over and over, right? And then the person cursed you on top of it. At the end of the day, ask yourself, at what point do you forgive? But the Bible is saying that let's forgive. Let's forgive. Hand it all over to God. Forgive them and live at peace with them. Love your enemies. And then what? God what? will also forgive you of your sins, right? God richly bless you, Jaden and Benedict. Um, now we go to um, Darren. I think, I think that Jesus wasn't the only one who actually forgave people. I think that also David, he forgave Saul a bunch, actually many, many times. In situations where he could have killed Saul, he, he decided to forgive him. And that is why when you read 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 15 it says may the lord be our judge and decide between us may he consider my cause and uphold it may he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand so this was david speaking even though he just decided not to kill saul and this is what saul also said in return he said that i know that you surely be king in in that kingdom and that the kingdom of israel will be established in your hands so that proved that after david had finished finished deciding that he won't kill Saul. Saul changed and then his reward was that Saul stopped pursuing him. <laughs> God, God bless you, Darren. Great contribution. Great contribution. Yes, sometimes if the, um, not, it's, it wasn't only Jesus that would send his only, it's not only God that sent Jesus to come die for us. And it's not only Jesus that forgave. David forgave Saul. Yes, he get forgave so. Yes, Darren. Who, who, what are some of the people? Can some of you think on top of your head? Um, people in the Bible that also exhibited um, um, forgiveness, um, 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 showed forgiveness towards other people or forgave people in the Bible. Let's talk about uh, some of those characters in the Bible. Yes, Declan. 
And before I want to talk about that, um, <laughs> I wanted to say that in Luke 6 31, it says that due to others, as you have them due to you. So if you love others, other people love you back. Okay, you, but you're not supposed to expect But then Stephen, also Stephen, once he was being stoned by all those people, he still said this that he said this that to forgive them for what they have done, for they do not know what they have done. God bless you. God bless you, Declan. That word. Mm. Stephen also pleaded on behalf of the of his own enemies that stoned him he said go forgive them for they do not know what they are doing okay darren say one last thing and then i will move to um uh, it will be a a, a nike's turn yeah okay i wanted to add to what the clown said about stephen what he said i think that if it wasn't for stephen paul would have never become an apostle because it was by stephen's prayer that paul became an apostle because that, because Jesus, when he told the parable, he said that to who, like to to whom who receives more, much be given. That means that the more you have, the more you will get. So when Stephen prayed for Paul, I think God forgave Paul of everything he had done. Then he said, okay, so now you can become the Apostle Paul. Awesome, awesome, Darren. God bless you. Great contribution, Declan. <laughs> what are you guys doing right there? <laughs> boys, boys. So God richly bless all of you. Now let's go to Anaike. Um, one of the people in the Bible who showed forgiveness, one one of the most important ones is Jesus, because even how, like his disciples weren't just normal people who always were good people. They they sometimes sin, sinned, but God, but Jesus forgave them so many times. And he didn't even he didn't even count about it. He just forgave them without without doubting, because he loved his his disciples very much, because they were his people. But he didn't just show just show that to just his disciples. He showed it to everybody, because even so, there was a story in the Bible about how um how there were like two women. I forgot their names, but they were. But they were like, um, so one of them, one of them was listening to Jesus preaching in one of the women's house. And the other woman was cooking. And then Jesus said, you should come and listen to the preaching. Because the, the woman got mad that the other woman was not helping her out with the stuff. So, so then she said, can you please forgive me? And, and Jesus even forgave her for what she has done. So you see, Great. Jesus was a really good one. Great contribution. I didn't want to mention those women's name. Who remembers the name of, of, of what Anaika is talking about, the women? You remember? Yes. yes. Okay, Darren. It was Martha and Mary. What was it? It was Martha and Mary. It was Martha and Mary. She was talking talking about Martha and Mary, when one was busily cooking, the other went to sit down, right? Listening to the word of God. He said, so you are not even coming here to help me out. He was upset for no reason, but nobody even told you to go cook, right? Sometimes we get ourselves so caught up in things that are not really that important. And then we get upset about it. We have to let go. We have to just be ourselves. We have to learn not to whine and complain about things. And let's just be our own self. God bless you, Anika. Great contribution. Um, I, I think I got lost with that. Yeah. We'll go to Benedict, and then we go to Jaden, and then we come to um, um, Caleb. I see Caleb signs up. Yeah. yeah. So first, I wanted to add on to Anika, what she said about sinning, the, how Jesus forgave disciples for sinning. I honestly, in my opinion, don't think they sinned that much. Kind of, I, I, I know this for a fact. The devil does not have enough courage to come to Jesus, especially that Peter strongly believed in Jesus. Like he had a good, good, pretty good relationship with him. So I don't think he had the courage to come there like, Hey, do this, hey, do that, hey, <laughs> do that type of stuff. Also, yeah. one person who showed forgiveness is Job. As we all know, 
he was tempted by the devil, devil, mm-hmm. and he got he put all these swords on his hand, and then his friends were like, "Hey, you want to sin against God greatly? You must repent." But Job knew he didn't do anything wrong, mm-hmm. so he even in the end when God revealed Himself to Job and said, "Where were you? Where I created the earth?" And he fell humbly before God and said, nowhere. He wasn't in existence. But God still knew that Joseph was, I mean, Job was still righteous in his eyes. That's why he said, he told them, after he talked to Job, he went to his friends and told them to go and beg by Job's knees for forgiveness. And Job forgave them. And Job forgave them. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution, Benedict. Yes, Jaden. Yeah. And in the beginning of the Bible, God forgave Adam and Eve from eating the food. And, and he still protected them. And he still protected them. So even when Adam and Eve had sinned, and God cast them out of the garden of Eden, God's, God was still with them. So God forgave them, God, God punished them, right? We know they still got their punishment. So that's what mommy and daddy sometimes do, right? We still have to correct you, but that does not mean we don't love you, right? We still love you. We still will give you food and clothe you and show you love. But when you're wrong, we have to talk to you, right? By what? Saying that, honey, this was wrong. You don't have to do it again. And then when you do it again, then this will be the consequences of your actions. So we correct you, right? Don't spare the child or what? The road. road. Good, 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 good. So here it is okay. Adam and Eve was what was, was sinned against God. They were punished and what? But God's favor, God still protected them wherever they go, uh, they went. Um, Jaden, God richly bless you for that. Right now, we're done with them and I go to Caleb. I'll come to you, Darren. Caleb Han has been out for a while. This reminds me of two stories. The story of Share them all, handsome. Share them all. It reminds me of the story of Job, when uh-huh. Job's sons and daughters, when they're going on the feast to like um like like going to the like order like to their house to have feast, like they were drinking, eating and doing stuff. Like you can drink and eat, but they were doing it wrongly. So whenever they left, every day Job well, like um, we do a burnt offering for how many children he have, he has um, he has, and asking God for forgiveness. And the second one was a parable of the two debtors, deb- debtors when um when one of them, when one of them was like um had to pay like amount of money. Like for example, Bishop told me like yesterday that um, like for example, like one's house was like like broken and the other one just had to like go pay for a lollipop so he said the one who had to pay for the lollipop only had one and the one who had to pay for the roof only had one million so then when they came back the one with the lollipop said he can't pay the one dollar and the one with the roof said he couldn't pay the with the roof because uh, they couldn't finish it and his money blew away so the king forgave them and canceled their debts. Wow, that's a cool story. By the way, who is Bishop? Oh, so you have Bishop Caleb, uh, Bishop uh, Joel? Yes, they also call me by Bishop. Oh, they also call you by Bishop. Oh, I see. I Bishop Joel. Nice meeting you, Bishop. Cool story. God richly bless you for sharing with us, uh, uh, Caleb. God bless you. Yes, we go. To, we'll go on to um, um, Darren now. I just wanted to add to what you said back when you said that God disciplined what you call Job's Job's friends. I wanted to add that when you read the Bible, it says that God disciplines those He loves, meaning that we should have been expecting that. Wow. 
Wow. That's a deep one. God bless you, Caleb. God bless you. Yes. Any ideas before we move on? God bless you. Yes, uh, Benedict, and then we move on. I just want to add, just make sure you forgive everyone before you come to pray to God. The Bible says that in Mark 11, 25, it says, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against someone, anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. So to reiterate, just forgive, forgive in general. Don't be marking down or keeping them in the back of your head. Let it go through one ear and come off the other. Awesome. God bless you. We should just forgive. We should just forgive. I think when we make up our mind that no matter what people will do to us, wrong will wrong us. What people, bad things that people will do to us, we have to make up our minds as precious than ones that we are going to forgive. Irrespective of how bad it is, you will forgive. And do not only forgive your friends, you need to forgive your enemies as well. You need to forgive your enemies as well. I have a question. How? I mean, I want to ask that when you have um, when you have an, a disagreement or when you have a big fallout with your brother or sister or a friend or somebody you don't know but like uh, your classmate or or somebody, how do you normally react? How do you normally react? Let's say you go to school or even at home. Uh, like we know we have a lot of brothers here, right? We have the your boys brothers. We have the Mesa White brothers, we have the, um, the, the Ofori brothers, and I know Anaika has sisters too, right? So everybody here I see, they all have brothers and sisters at home that are not here with me. When they do something and you, you have a big fallout, you understand fallout, right? You, have, you are in disagreement with them. They do something that kind of make you so mad. How do you react? How do you react to it? Can, can I call everybody one by one to tell me something? Would that be fair? Okay, so then let's start with Declan. Declan, how do you react when Darren gets on your nerves? How do you react? I actually just sometimes ignore him and just sometimes also tell him to stop what he's doing and other stuff and just be compromised. Sometimes, so you have never like went. You've never went that way before. Actually, sometimes. Sometimes, and how did you react? I was very angry. You were very angry, and then what happened next? And Share with us, because we want to learn from you. And then I told my mom and dad. And mom and dad settled it, right? Yes. Awesome. Amazing. Oh, sometimes, sometimes you do just say, figure it out yourself. Sometimes they tell you, figure it out. I love that part. That's what I tell my kids. I said, the two of you go to your room and then make peace with each other. Talk it out. Solve or it. Or sometimes even we just go to a nap and just sleep. And then when you sleep have, over it. Yeah, when we <laughs> yeah, forgot what we even agree about. Yeah. Like, oh, so, um, like, what happened? <laughs> wow wow awesome awesome yes Darren, share yours with me the, I, mm. yeah, I do the same thing the con does oh sometimes i so just maybe when maybe he's maybe sometimes it's because he's angry that's why he's also maybe making me annoyed so sometimes i try to make him laugh you also make him laugh and sometimes make him angry just like you also do to him so basically each of you you get on each other's nerves right but you find a way to forgive each other and make peace and move on in the house because you are the only two children in the house, right? So then if you are mad at each other, how are you going to go by your day, right? There's nobody else to play with, right? And mommy, daddy is saying that, go figure it out, right? And by so doing, you have to resolve it, right? Great uh, uh, um, example. God bless you. Yes, we go to the Mensa White family. Mensa White family, how do you uh, react? When your brother gets on your nerves, when your brother step on your feet and it hurts so bad, or when they say something, they lie on you and do something. Be realistic. 
How do you react? Yes, Joel, we start with Bishop first. Oh, okay. For me, although I have three brothers, it's rare for me to fight with them. But in those rare chances, when I get angry, I either tell them a story like Jesus, a parable, or I just scream and tell them, I'm going to tell mommy and then they stop whatever they're doing. Awesome, Bishop. You really have good Bishop then. Wow. So um, that is Bishop's story. Um, um, his example of how he handles um, um, his anger or uh, when the brother gets on his nerves, that is how he reacts. Sometimes he, get, he gets to the extreme. He tells them, I'm going to tell mommy and daddy. And mommy and daddy will fix it, right? Now, okay, let's go to Caleb. Caleb, how do you handle Bushop and your brother, or your little baby brother? Well, I have like two. Well, mostly like I fight with my little brother. He's five. And most of the time he gets on my nerves. Like he goes checking on my book bag. He, um, he mostly like goes in my closet, messes up my closet. So most of the time he just starts fighting me and I fight back. Or, oh, when he fights you, fight him back. Yeah. God bless you for telling the truth. I just want honest, I mean, practical example. And we are human. And remember, we are kids, right? When you're, you haven't done anything to your brother and your brother comes at you, what will you do? You will try and fight back, right? That is a natural thing that every child will do. I haven't done nothing. You are, you are, you are, you go to my closet and you are ruling my clothes and I'm saying it and you attack me. Oh, some kids will go, I mean, majority of the kids will go back and fight you back, right? But beloved, Caleb, we have learned this afternoon that, remember you use the word my baby brother, right? He is your baby brother. He doesn't know what he's doing. Sometimes he will get on your nerves. Sometimes he will do things, remember, and he's not gonna do it only one time. He would do it all the time because he knows. Sometimes these precious little kids, they do it because they want attention from you. So when they keep doing, how come he doesn't do that to Bushra, but he always comes to you to do it? Because well, he knows, yes? Well, because like mostly Bishop has his own room. And oh, like and you share a room with him. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah. So the Bible is telling us that alone. Love forgives, true love forgives. If you truly love your brother, then when your brother do that, you need to forgive him. Find a way to forgive him. And when you pray, pray to God, that God, help my brother. What's your brother's name? Gideon. Gideon. Tell Gideon. Say, Gideon, what you are doing, it doesn't exhibit the true Gideon in the Bible. Oh, <laughs> then you begin to tell him what who Gideon is in the Bible, okay? He said, Gideon, don't do this. But don't fight him because if you fight him, remember, you share a room with him, right? He's not your enemy. He's your brother. You need to love him. If the Bible is telling us we should love our enemies, then we need to love our brothers, right? So yes. let us love them. Let us have patience for them and pray to God that God will give you patience to be able to live at peace with Gideon, okay? God bless you. I love the examples, you guys. Oh, yeah. Now we'll go to Anaika. Anaika. I know you have three sis two sisters at home, right? Yeah. Okay, so okay, tell me your example or your experience. How do you handle um, a sister or a friend or somebody you don't know who gets on your nerves and makes you so mad? How do you handle that? Normally, I would just say that I'm gonna do something to their like device or something so that so that they can get scared and then they'll say no and then then I'll then I'll forgive them after. Well today today earlier in the car my sister was making a lot of noise with this like bag. It had like a chained like 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 the thing that you that you used to hold hold it like that's what she was like jingling and it was so annoying because it was hard for me to sleep after a long day so I kept telling her to stop and she didn't stop to make matters where she was humming so all I could ever do was just like or just tell her or just scream so that so that mommy and daddy could hear and then it would be finished so that so so basically then she stopped 
and I was finally so really. So basically, I just like tell them either I'm going to hack their device, which is not what I'm actually going to do. I just do that. I just say that so I can scare them. And they're going to be like, no, please don't. And then I said, fine. And then, then we should give each other. And then that's the end. So sometimes you go through that by threatening them that if you don't do this, I'll take your tablet from you and they know you can do it and then they stop right and there are times that too they may not stop they just keep going and going and then when they get to that point if you can help it you call mommy and daddy in to help you out god bless you for sharing with us yes we go to the your boys family mm -hmm. so, we can start uh let me just start so one way my siblings annoy me is mostly, well, like, just annoying me, like, nudging me or poking me or slapping me when I'm sleeping or making lots of noise. Or maybe one is walking behind the camera as we speak right now. Or <laughs> doing something that is just not right. It just doesn't feel good. And then first thing I have to do is I tell them to stop. Well, let me tell my old story. First, I would tell them to stop. And then when you stop, I will say, hey, I'm going to do this. And I actually <laughs> would. So I would be careful about what I say. So if they still don't do it, I would do what I say. And some, and most three-fourths of the time isn't good at all. So after that, I probably will get punished, which mm -hmm. happens a lot. Then... My, I ask my brother for forgiveness, he forgives me, or it's the other way around. Now, because I stop doing what I say, I just, sometimes I just walk away, or sometimes I'm just like, hey, look over there. Hey, I see a plane. I'm like, oh, a plane? And I just run upstairs or somewhere where they won't be able to find me. God bless you for sharing. God bless you for sharing. So Benedict is saying that sometimes they can, he, he kind of tell them to stop. And if you don't stop, then I'm going to do this. And if they don't stop, he actually does it, what he said he was going to do. But most of the time when he reacts by doing whatever, let's say, if you don't stop, I'm going to slap you. And they don't stop. And then he go for their face and slap them, right? And when you do that, guess what happens to him? He gets yeah. in trouble, right? Yeah, the, the brother begins to cry and guess what happened? You get in trouble and mommy and daddy are coming for you, right? So even though somebody did something bad to you because you didn't take your time and you reacted, now you are in trouble and then what? Mommy and daddy are coming for you and you will get punished for it, right? So you ask yourself, what did I even just do? Maybe if I had gotten a little bit more patient, I wouldn't have what They would have still been punished and I would have been the one sitting there. But now, even though you were the one they did the wrong to, you get what? Well, two wrongs, right? You get mommy and daddy's punishment as your brother also hit you, but you didn't get patient. So you hit them back and you got in trouble. So we are being advised to have patience and love one another. If you keep telling them and they don't stop, just leave them. And go to mommy and tell them, mommy, daddy, this is what is going on. I told him several times to stop. He wouldn't stop. And I know you would tell us to go work it out. And I'm just telling you that, please, if you get some free time, talk to him. And God, what well, mommy and daddy will listen, right? But when we act on our anger, it brings more problems to us. True love, true love, love of forgiving. Let's love one another. Amen. Now we are wrapping up. Yes, Jay, yes. Um, let's Jaden share this um and then you can come in. Yes, Jaden. And because when I get angry, I hit them and then that's when then the first time mom tells me just call me when my sister hits me, and then I say okay. And then she forgives me. Okay. So when when your sister gets on you, on your nerves, mommy tell you that, okay, forgive them. But when they wrong you, come tell me, right? And have you been doing it? Yeah. Yeah. 
I love that response, meaning that he's not so confident on that. Yeah, God will help you, okay? But remember, love is forgiven. We are talking about love. Love is forgiven. And um, that is our topic for today. And our scripture reading was taken from Genesis 37, 12 to 28, where we talked about what Jacob, who loved his son more than the other what, 11, um, uh, 11 sons that he had. And because he loved so uh, Joseph so much, his brothers, other brothers became jealous of him. And then Joseph, the dreamer, went to share his dream with his brothers and that made them and the brothers even more angrier and that led him into trouble that's what we are talking about today love is forgiving with all the bad things that the brothers did to joseph joseph still forgave what forgave his brothers true love love what quenches all anger love quenches all anger yes benedict i just want to say that one when the spirit Spirit, for the rod, spare the child. I just want to say that my parents really know how to use the rod because as you get older, the consequences more, get more like more tense. And I just want to say the consequences now is hearing the leather belt coming down the hall. Oh, yeah. So if you don't want to get it, then we'll stay out of trouble. All you can do is to ignore them, forgive them, so that you don't have any, what, burning sensations on your skin, right? But rather, you what, you forgive and you yourself stay at peace, right? And then when everything comes down, you can talk to mommy to talk to your brother or your sister. May the Lord bless all of us. Great contributions, great contribution. We have been talking about what? Forgiving, forgiving. Love forgives. Love forgives. We need to forgive one another at all times. You know, precious ones, you see, hate and anger are always defeated. Where there is love, where there is love, where there is love, there is no hate and there is no anger. If you know how to forgive, your love will be what? Will be perfect, will be amazing, will be mm, fantastic. Love covers all sins and what wrongdoing as god covers our sins through jesus christ hallelujah god forgive us because of his love only through the death of his what his son jesus christ so if we do not forgive how can we say that what we have love if you can't forgive, then you don't have love. You can only what say you have love if you can forgive what? Your brothers and your sisters and your enemies. This week, precious ones, show some love. Show someone that you love them, even if they do not show you love, right? Even if what? They don't show love to you. Love them. Try and extend love. This week, practice it. If you've not been practicing it, practice it. Love, 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 love. And if anyone does, does anything wrong to you, show them how much better it is to forgive than to get upset. Precious ones, don't forget this week, show someone that you love them. You love them. Even if they don't show love to you. Hallelujah. And then if you, if anyone does something wrong to you, right? On and 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 it hurts so bad, still show them how much better it is to forgive, right? Than what to get upset. You don't have to get upset. We also need to pray and ask God to always grant us the grace to ask us what. Uh, um, strength to be able to forgive one another. Precious ones, we have come to the end of our program. But before we go, there is something I want to share with all of you. And that is what? Kids what? Pentecostal puppet. There is a national program that is coming up. It is going to be fun, 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 right? Remember, the National Children's Week 
um, uh, National Children's Ministry 2020, our theme is what? A glorious church revived to raise godly children. A glorious church revived to raise godly God children. children. God bless you. And then we're going to have what well, this year we are going to have Pentecostal puppet for kids. C O P U S A. It is a national level program. And what it is what is 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 a a puppet for kids where what children are supposed to dress up and preach like pastors to preach like uh, if you're a lady or you were a girl and you participate you are participating you are entering into co this competition they will want you to stand there and preach like what a pastor's wife or sofu mommy a woman of god we want you to stand and what and preach to us and and this will happen first of august it will happen during the children's week it is going to be on local level, then it goes to district level, and it goes to regional level, and then it will come to national level. So please call your, your, your Sunday school teachers, call your district leaders, call your regional leaders and ask them about this program. They know, they are all aware of this program. And the topic that we want you to uh, prepare your sermon about is a glorious church revived to possess the nation, Ephesians 5.27, Ephesians 3.21, and Psalms 85 verse 6. And the areas that we want all of you precious ones to focus about is what? The way you're going to dress, can you wear a t-shirt to come and stand in the pulpit and preach? No, you need to look nicely dressed, right? You need to look presentable. You need to fix your hair. If you're a girl, make your hair nice. If you're a boy, you need to brush your hair and look so nice. If you feel like putting on a suit or a jacket or an African wear or a shirt, feel free to do that, but no t-shirt, okay? And no flip-flops and the shorts. You know, you've never seen a pastor stand in front of them at the back of the pulpit with a short and a flip-flop, right? It never happens. Remember, the day you are preaching, you are a pastor, right? And you are a woman of God. So you need to dress appropriately. And then your posture. When you preach, you need to move around. Don't just stand there, excuse me, to say like a robot and just read to us. You need to have some gestures, right? That shows how you understand what you are teaching to us. We sit and listen. And then in your presentation, remember to put side examples and, and, and put scriptures, other scriptures that is related to your topic. May the Lord bless all of you. May the Lord keep you all of you safe till we meet again next week. Precious ones, you've been amazing. We love you all. And we hope to see all of you next week. We love you all. And until then, it's bye for now. Bye. bye. I love you. Bye. I love bye. all of you. Bye. Bless all of you. In